from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. very, very much for these luminous performances. It's been a tremendous joy to have you in the Bach Collegium Japan here again at the library and to have the time to share a few of our treasures with you. This afternoon we had the pleasure of looking with you and your colleagues at the original manuscript of Bach's Cantata Number no. 10 and your exhilaration at encountering this manuscript was tremendously infectious. Can you talk a little bit about what that means for you, the experience of Countering an original score like this? Uh, <clears throat> well, well, still my heart is a little beating, so it's <laughs> uh, try to calm down. Uh, well, all the time, this, uh, yeah, well, we have seen wonderful original autograph uh, this afternoon, and the, uh, that uh, those uh, original manuscripts, especially the autograph of Johann Sebastian Bach himself, as a they inspire us very much because uh, you, he has written uh, not only the notes but sometimes the slurs and the indication of the articulations and so on and all the details are very, very interesting to see and that you can never uh, sense uh, this kind of thing from the printed uh, material, of course. So, uh, of course, the Neue Bach Hans Lover, the new Bach edition helps us a lot, but uh, still, the, we should all time trace to uh, the, this actually editing procedure to see this, so from the original source until the material the printed and so on. So, that is a really great uh, pleasure. Yeah. You know, there was a little uh, phrase at the bottom of the page that you notice in, uh, at the very bottom mm -hmm. underneath the stage. Yeah. Tell the audience about that. Yeah, that's very interesting. Because, um, here is the, the one of the most important uh, material of the cantata number ten, my Zeli Hefted and Heron, that is a German Magnificat, and the uh, that's the autograph score. So, and the, and the uh, on the on the edge of the first page, uh, Bach has uh, written down a couple of bars uh, right next uh, to that page. That means. Uh, uh, the one thing is probably he has uh, uh, made an attempt to the how to the polyphonic line uh, works out and so on. But at the same time, uh, the, when he has uh, finished the first page, probably he could not uh, turn over yet because the ink is still wet. So that's why before he forgets the next uh, couple of parts, he has written down on the edge. That was, yeah, that's a really interesting thing. You said that's very rare. You hadn't seen that yes, very, very, very rare. This is the kind of thing that you learn when yeah. you're looking at these. Um, and you mentioned that the parts are actually more valuable for a performer than the score. Mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, at the time, of course, no copy machine. So the, the parts must be uh, made from the score. And uh, uh, so probably at that time, the parts uh, set, set of parts, uh, performing parts, is a uh, more important than the score because uh, the, if you get the uh, parts, uh, they didn't immediately perform that piece. So that's why when uh, the uh, after his death, uh, 1750, uh, all the, uh, the, uh, the original material by himself are divided in two. And one is the score and the some duet, and uh, the other group is the, the set of parts. And the, the, this set of parts are uh, thought probably most valuable, more, more valuable than school. And you mentioned that one half would go to his family and others would yeah, go to Yes, his yeah, one, one school and the blend is going to one part, person and the other uh, set going to the second person. And the Bach has written down, uh, in principle, all the detailed articulations and the indication of slurs and so on, not, uh, the, that's not in the score, instead that is only in the parts directly. Mm -hmm. So that's the, on the parts, uh, all the notes uh, were copied by a copyist. 
uh, his assistant and mm -hmm. some sons and so on. But the, after that, he has always uh, this, uh, looked through and uh, checked all the details. And at the same time, he has added many indications of the uh, slurs and also figuration of the passive continuum. So the, on the parts, the notes are usually copied by someone else, but the, all the detailed indications are by himself. That is a very, very interesting thing. Yeah. It was a wonderful, yeah. wonderful time. Um, critics talk about, of course, write about you as your performances as impeccable and uh, revelatory and imbued with spiritual vigor. And if we had time for a mystical conversation, we could talk about how you inculcate these kinds of qualities in t teaching and your students. So we don't really have time for that, but I was wondering if you'd comment on some of the uh, remarks you made about the technique end of things. And you say that you, you suggest people think theatrically. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, well, you said, yeah, someone said that the life is a theater, but uh, the, uh, the bass music is so dramatic, and the, uh, all, I think the, all the technical aspects goes together with the idea of the music, but not only music, but uh, the expression. So the techniques are always developed by this kind of idea, musical idea, and that how the, so that's very important to get a musical idea or what kind of expression you uh, want to make. That uh, uh, makes the technique better. So those two things are always go together. So at that time, for example, he has uh, published a couple of uh, uh, collection of Habsburg pieces uh, called under the title of Klavier Jugung. So Klavier Jugung means this is actually uh, for practice. So Klavier Jugung is the, how the, the, the practice. Yeah. So the, at that time, the practice meant for probably to get an idea and, and to, uh, to, to become able to uh, make an, this and that expression. So it's not only the, the uh, Move the fingers and so on, but so the, the, uh, in the Baroque time, the, the, this kind of uh, motion of the finger is always uh, very closely connected to the ex expression. So, probably after the Czerny or Beethoven time, you see, the piano technique are more developed, and probably it, it was needed to, to be trained a little more mechanically. So, that's why, for example, the etude of the Czerny and so on, yeah. that's a completely different idea, different concept from the Baroque time. So Baroque time was still, everything was very well related to that together. Fascinating. Well, we, uh, maybe a question about your recordings, and then I know some people in the audience will have some questions. Um, now that you have completed a staggering 55 CD set of the complete Bach cantatas, um, and of course this month you've just had a big gramophone award for your organ work CD, you have a lot going on, and you made a, a recording with your son, I believe, the harpsichord. With all the, maybe talk a little bit about how this, you're at this pinnacle. Uh, well, yeah, we have uh, indeed completed the uh, church cantatas, uh, sadly, because uh, that's, uh, the, well, there are no more church cantata to record, so that makes me very sad, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we are still going on with the secular cantatas, and, uh, and the, uh, apart from the vocal works, we are doing uh, also Habsburg works, and the, uh, the, 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 you mentioned the, the CD with my son is a two half school CDs. Yeah. My son is a, now active as a half schoolist and conductor and, and so on. And, uh, and we, that was a great pleasure. So we have played all the time in, at home. You see, that's the two half school the concerti and so on. And the, well, one day we well, why don't we make the one CD? <laughs> and then the, the, the these people of the CD company uh, found it very nice idea so that we did. Uh, that one CD, and uh, that comes uh, probably one more uh, uh, CD uh, concerti with the uh, three half school and four half school and so on. So that's the, that, that is to be recorded, and, and uh, well, many things to do. So the, uh, well, actually, <laughs> I have almost completed the half school solo works as well, but uh, there's still three projects are missing, and the in between I could not wait uh, for the organ uh, complete series because otherwise I'm getting too old to play organ works. That's why I started organ works as well. So <laughs> well, uh, but uh, well, you see. You also are doing Mahler and Mendelssohn. I mean, you have many projects. 
Yeah, well, that is a not for recording yet, but um, uh, well, there are plenty of wonderful music, and the, uh, I uh, well, uh, since a couple of years, I uh, have been asked to work with the symphony orchestra, and uh, at the beginning they asked me to do Bach, but actually I don't think it works very well with Bach's music, with the symphony orchestra, because setting wise and the, you see the instrument wise and the, of course I don't think it's uh, impossible to do Bach with modern, modern instruments, but still uh, the, the organization and the, uh, the concert uh, structure, the concert activity is not uh, always appropriate for the Bach thing. So that's why I have offered some doing Mozart, Beethoven, and Mendelssohn, and uh, I love this long time Mara and Stravinsky. Stravinsky CDs uh, coming out probably in a couple of months, yes. So, well, uh, I'm trying to make my life as busy as possible. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've said that music is the food that nourishes you every day, so this yeah. is how you have this extraordinary energy. Well, perhaps there are just a couple questions here from someone. Well, I, I, I did have one question that if you were going to work more with, with orchestras, because I saw you earlier this year the Baltimore mm -hmm. uh, Symphony. Yeah. But you, you sort of answered that question already. Uh, that you're, who, who are you doing the Mahler? Uh, uh, Mahler is I've done only in Japan okay. uh, yet. So, <laughs> uh, but I find it so nice to work with a wonderful orchestra like Baltimore and we did also New Philharmonic and uh, together with my choir and uh, well Boston Symphony and so on. There's quite many symphony orchestras and the, I uh, love working with them. Because of the this kind of orchestra musicians are a little bit different from our members of course with the instruments are completely different and the the the, the concept of the music making is quite much different. But still uh, the good orchestra or the good musicians have always uh, this kind of allowance to come closer and also we can talk about the music and feeling and so on. That's really really uh, yeah fascinating. Uh, no, they actually, I have planned already here, <laughs> but <laughs> only Venus uh, Paulus and the Elijah is of course one of the most important repertory for me. And uh, we have done uh, with my choir and orchestra Paulus uh, a couple of times, yeah. But still, uh, we cannot afford the Megan CD, so if you could help us, then we can. <laughs> <laughs> really, really, but we need this to help. <laughs> all over the world, and I'm just curious, could you give us a sense of the different reactions of audiences in different parts of the world, and especially in Germany and Leipzig, mm -hmm. where, you know, I know they've honored you, but is there a special reception that you get when you perform in Germany? Um, well, that's a very interesting question, because, uh, uh, of course, we expect all the time completely different reaction from the different country. But actually, the, there are so many uh, fans of Bach's music and everywhere in the, in the world. And the, um, the, if you have a really good audience, uh, there's, then there's more or less a similar excitement. We, we can share all the time this kind of excitement with audience and members. So, the, uh, well, that's not so different as you you expect. But still, of course, in Japan, uh, is completely different. Well, Japanese audience is never standing up, and the standing position doesn't exist in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> and the, uh, but that doesn't mean to, not to, to, to be accepted less, of course, but, but it is very, very nice. And the, uh, in, yeah, in, uh, for example, in America, or in Germany, for example, Germany, the, the, probably the, the German, German audience is the closest uh, being for, for the Bach's music and they, they, they do have a very, often very personal experience with, uh, with this and that Bach's piece. So for example, when we have performed a couple of cantatas and so on, and then quite many people came to me after the concert, uh, this cantata was performed in the, the funeral of my mother or something like that. So those kind of personal experience of all of the uh, hearing. So, and it, that's a really nice thing, I think. 
and the uh, and they can appreciate the word by word, of course, unless our pronunciation is wrong. But so uh, so this kind of detailed uh, the reaction is of course very very interesting. But so the um, but in generally in America as a, uh, or in in everywhere the wonderful uh, reception we we are having this all time. That was for tonight. Maybe one more question. I thought the pitch is lower. What 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 is the the pitch? It's not forty four forty, right? No, this is the four 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 fifteen tonight. So four fifteen is the one half tone lower than usual standard in nowadays, but. Uh, this is a kind of uh, compromised modern version of Baroque interpretation. I mean, the, 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 in Baroque time, it was no, uh, there was no, no standard pitch. So the uh, city by city or venue by, by venue, there's completely different uh, uh, pitch was used. So for example, in Paris, uh, in France, it's uh, much lower, probably one whole ton lower, so around 390 or 92 and so on. And the, while the, the northern Germany, the organ were uh, much higher pitch, uh, so something like uh, uh, 465 or even up to 480 or 85 and so on. If you compare with the modern piano, this, uh, this, uh, the range is uh, from F sharp to B natural or something like that. So that's uh, all each note uh, can be uh, said as A. So that is the problem. So uh, the Bach himself has used uh, the two uh, different uh, pitch very intentionally. The one is the chord, also called the organ pitch, that means around 455, 65. And the one is the common pitch, that is around 415. And the, this gap is exactly one whole tone. So that's why in all the Bach's original parts of, of cantatas, uh, the organ part uh, is, is uh, the written uh, down a whole tone all the time. So transpose down all the time. So all that was thought of the transposing instruments, while the uh, wind section and string instruments, uh, instruments are uh, tuned on the same pitch. So that is a really complicated thing, and they probably uh, you would fall in sleep. So maybe start the explanation of this kind of thing. Wonderful. Well, you know, we, we hate to stop. We wish we could keep you several days, but we do need to stop because of the, uh, the police uh, at the door. Oh. But <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.